Thank you. Um, one, I was lucky enough to be at the uh, the, sum the the strategy summit in August where we went through some uh, fundraising training. Um, I think that I also, I worked at the New York State Psychiatric Institute as a research intern and I did a little bit of grant writing there. Um, although I'm, I'm not an expert in it, but I think that some important things, I'm a, I, I think I'm pretty good with people and I think that when it comes to fundraising, people always talk about the ask. It's about the psychology of it. It's about fear and I think that I'm pretty good. I think that it's important to help people understand why what they're going after is not just, or why donating isn't just good for a cause, but why it's good for them. And when I bring in these new relationships from these other organizations, that taps us into an entire new donor pool who are very emotionally connected to what's happening. Um, and I think that, um, I don't know, for those, of, for those of you that know me, I really enjoy facing fears. I had to do it for my life, and I try to game face everything, so bring it on. If it's scary, I'm there, because that's what, you have to do scary things in life. <laughs> and definitely asking for donations is scary. Um, as I mentioned last night, I work briefly as a door-to-door -door fundraiser and walking up to strangers' houses and trying to convince them why uh, they should give you money really helps you hone your ask skills. Uh, so I still have ways to go, but I'm really comfortable in that department. Um, Bringing it back to diversity, I'm so passionate about the issue because it's not some abstract concept. It is a tool that we need to utilize, um, and in fundraising is a perfect example. Uh, communicating with, uh, building relationships with other communities um, is what we need to do to be able to make not just small asks, but large ones. And um, I think that at the chapter level, we should encourage whenever events are done or people do outreach, even just having a link to uh, like the philanthropic website was really awesome, one dollar donations. Um, but you know, in terms of me personally, we do. We need to make big asks, and I think that we need to reach these communities that we haven't targeted as much to do so. <coughs> this one. That's <laughs> oh wow. That's part of the test. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to take a little bit different approach when it comes to fundraising. As CFO of our chapter and CFO of the student government, I had a lot of opportunity dealing with funding policies, and I think one of the best things we ever did was set up a partnership with LEAP, where 50% of the proceeds go to LEAP and 50% of the proceeds go to SSDP. So that means every single event that you have on your campus can actually help fund SSDP. So if we were to do that with MAPS, with Normal, with every other drug policy organization in the world, then every single chapter here, every time we hold an event, can help fund National. And I think that's the best way to do it, because honestly, we're a grassroots organization, and the idea that we're going to be constantly asking rich people for money and that's how we're going to function as an organization is a little bit troublesome. So I really think that we need to have empower the chapters to help us raise funds but also Going back to the direct action question before, I really think the best fundraising tool is getting shit done. So if we actually go out and change laws and we go out there and make things happen, that's what's going to make funders choose SSDP over every other organization that they're thinking about funding. Okay, for my ideas are based upon fundraising is um, basically, uh, the key terms we have to look at is, for me, as a marketer, that, um, you know, we are a non-profit organization, and um, the logistics of it is we need donations. Donations will come from, um, you know, rich clients, and also people who are fans of SSDP. Um, with um, proven things we've done with my uh, chapter at Roosevelt was um, we established a good relationship with other organizations through Roosevelt, which allow you to network, which allows us to throw the national con uh, conferences at Roosevelt. And also, keeping those options open give you the ability, which I do for my chapter, is being a el liaisons for coalitions. So that allows you to have other options. All right, so some unique experience I have. Uh, I'm currently on the board of directors for the ACLU of Connecticut, and we bring in over half a million dollars per year, and that's just in Connecticut. That's not the national organization. So I want to bring over a lot of our strategies from the ACLU to help SSDP become a bigger and more stable organization like the ACLU currently is. So. One fundraising method that kind of stands out may seem a bit morbid or strange at first, but it's actually very successful, and that's getting donors to write the ACLU into their wills. So it's really, really awkward to ask the first time. Call someone up, and so you kind of start bringing that up, whether it's an old person, that kind of weird, if it's a young person, they don't have a will yet, and so you're like, you should make one. Once you get used to it, it's a lot easier. People are actually a lot more awkward, a lot more willing to uh, 
part with their money once they can't use it anymore than right out of their pocket right there. So if we start implementing that, it can really help SSDP become long-term and more stable like the ACLU is. Okay, so I know there's a pretty wide range of uh, different um, funding for each chapter. I've heard of thousands of dollar budgets. Um, to very, very small budgets, such as our school. I mean, I know that we, I mean, typically get around $300 to do what we're supposed to do. So um, we're, we get creative. Um, we find ways to reach out to people. But on a national level, I mean, primarily, I think fundraising means outreach to donors um, that, that are looking to help us achieve our goals. Um, something I think a candidate needs to be willing to do is pick up a phone, give someone a call, because there's so many people that aren't willing to do that. Um, and I believe that, I, I don't know, I think that we need to find people that are going to be receptive um, and not just do outreach, but actively maintain relationships with them because that's the only way we're going to continue to um, be bringing in money. Um, and I think that's something I could do. Well, I guess the advantage of going last is I get to combine everybody else's answers and sound really smart. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but, um, so some of my ideas, uh, like, like the rest of the candidates were saying, is the board is going to be more focused on these big asks. Uh, we're not going to be doing the small, um, you know, big, big sales. Um, but, but I think that encouraging the chapters to do that is, is extremely important. So if, if there's not already a, a useful guide for uh, how to fundraise, we should develop one and we should push it on the chapters. If we, um, we should encourage chapter leaders that have experience in fundraising to have uh, panels to teach their uh, candidates, or I'm sorry, their members how to fundraise, and they can invite other experienced fundraisers from their community. Um, we should combine fundraising by, re by region. Uh, I know that in DC that there's uh, several chapters um, that can come up and get together. Um, but I think on the major level, we're, uh, the board's going to be focusing on asking major donors, doing the philanthropic type thing, and uh, perhaps we should have like a national fundraising day of action. <laughs>